depending on and then depending on the accessories you get on it, you know, you're looking at upwards to like ten thousand dollars if you go for like the uh, Spinergy carbon fibre spoke wheels, uh, the special alloy guards or polyethylene guards, all the different accessories that can be put onto the chair to make it you know up to that ten thousand dollar mark to make the chair you know just work function better basically. So yeah, my chair is purely defensive with no wings. A high pick bar, which is the legal height and width, determined by the width of your chair. Um, is it good idea is to lock me up? Yeah, around about two years is the maximum life of an international class chair. Because it's just the, the hiding it takes, you know, the chair does get knocked around, you start knocking the toe in, toe out, and the main frame, and it's a set, set camera bar, so you can't, you know, you can't adjust it around, and once it's, it's bent out of shape, it's out of shape, and the chair just won't track very nicely or roll very nicely. This is for grip. Because my hand function's not very good, I use these leather gloves because they're tackified. They're um, American football gloves. And I use the bell grip just to add a little bit of tack so the ball sticks to my hand a bit better. I've been in a wheelchair for five and a half years now. I had my accident playing footy. I first heard about wheelchair rugby when I was lying flat on my back, had my neck in a big neck brace. And a nurse came in and started telling me about these guys that race around and smash into each other in wheelchairs and they fall out and he'd seen broken ribs and dislocated fingers. And here I was, just broken my, broken my neck from playing rugby. I was like, dude, give me a break, you know, I need, I've just broken my neck, you know. And, uh, but this sort of got me thinking, you know, I said to him, so if these guys are in wheelchairs, how do they have scrums? And he sort of looked at me and said, most of these guys broke their necks in scrums. Our exhibition matches are against Great Britain. We beat them in the quarter-finals at the Paralympics. You don't have to be a quad to play wheelchair rugby, as long as you have reduced arm and leg function, like Mark Frosbrook, an amputee known as Trunk. With the Wheel Blacks, the big disadvantage is we have no one with real trunk. If trunk muscles, a lot of the teams have got trunk players, and it allows them to, to, to be more maneuverable. And when you hit someone with trunk, you transfer the energy, and it hurts. When you look at Fosbrook, he's got a couple of fingers missing, his hands are a little bit dodgy, but he's got full upper body strength. So as you can see, he's got a big old belly there that's, you know, working for him quite well. So when you look at a guy like that, you wonder if he actually belongs in a game like wheelchair rugby. I say he does because I say he's got four limbs affected and there's definitely a place for him. But when you see the skills that he's got compared to some of the skills that we blacks have got, it's a pretty tough to play against a guy like that. You know, we don't have anybody in our team that walks. We don't have any trunk players. All of us are legitimate quads with legitimate quadriplegic characteristics. And I think the rest of the world looks at us that way as well because they see us as a true quadriplegic team. And so we're competing against you know, walkers, you know, guys that are 90 to 100 kilos. We're a small, fast, snippy little team that are a true quad, so we need to beat these guys. In the campaign for the Worlds, the Wheel Blacks are psyching up. You need all the tools to win a title, and one of ours is sports psychology. So that word anxious, which is really what this is all about, what are the feelings you get when you feel anxious? What actually do you feel? I'm doubting myself. OK. And yeah. um, so I, I actually get quite snappy. Self-esteem. Yeah. Self-doubt. Self-confidence. Confused. Confusion. Stress is all of those things. Most of these thoughts that lead to the feelings of nervousness or arousal or excitement basically come from things that you're worrying about that you can't control. Like, I'm worried that that guy might look bigger than me or that guy's faster than me. You can't control that. So don't worry about what you can't control, OK? So the big lesson is control the controllable. If you look at the group, a lot of them were actually injured playing rugby or doing some sort of sporting endeavour. Uh, so a lot of them had done sport before, but not to the level or the elite level they're expected now. 
OK, Billy, let's get him this time. The, the expectations of the programme on these players is significantly different to oh playing God. club or school or rugby as they would have done right as able-bodied people. So the, the, the major shift for them is this whole attitudinal shift from being a participant to an elite performer um, and the discipline that's involved in that. Come on, let's go. Go, 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 go. In 75. The guys that have been there for a long time um, have a problem. It's just something they do. Uh, but some of the young squad members are probably, it'd be fair to say, are struggling with that shift in mindset to actually eating, living, breathing, everything about excellence and trying to grow towards being world champions. Yeah, our defensive pattern's here. I reckon we'll run the inverted Y. When World Cup Rugby appeared on the scene, we're a bit of a novelty, really, and I don't think we really took ourselves too seriously. We had a good time, and you know, we were passionate about the hug, we were passionate about the silver fern and the black singlet, but we sort of, you know, that was it. But then as we became more professional and put more work in, and suddenly we looked around and thought, hang on, the Wheel Blacks are a team that can match it with anyone. Let's get that defense happening! The work that the guys do, that they're expected to do, is just huge. And that's why we say, look, you know, don't think of them as athletes with a disability, they're athletes. Because compare their training programs with any of the country's elite athletes, there's no difference. There's a definite part inside me, in all of us. You can see it in Dan, you can see it in Jerry. We all want to be the man. I want to be the man. I want to be, you know, the, the star of the team. I want to be the, sh you know, the shining light. I want to win that game. I want to win the, I want to score the last goal in the World Championship final. Rugby league was my life. It was everything I did. If I wasn't playing it at recess or lunchtime at school, I was training for it after school. This was in Sydney and Manly. That year, I was pretty stoked to be uh, in the Manly under 15s team, and then I was named in the New South Wales Combined Catholic Colleges team. And uh, we went to a tournament up in Harvey Bay in Queensland and played all the other states. And I was named player's player from that. And so I missed out on the Australian team, under 15s, but I, um, I got approached by two first grade rugby league clubs, Parramatta and, and Manly, to go and try out for them for their under 17s team. So I was looking forward to some pretty big things for my rugby league. And then my accident, yeah, my accident happened on our grand final day. We'd gone through the season pretty much undefeated and um, we were favourites to take it out. And um, it was towards the end of the game and I had the ball and um, I, I ran towards the try line and when I got to the defence I put my head down and buried into the tackle and basically put my neck in a position that it, it shouldn't have gone. And just the collision broke my neck. I just thought it was a big hit, you know. I've had lots of big hits before and I thought, oh yeah, that was a good one. Um, they'll just take me off and I'll be all right. I, I had no idea how people ended up in wheelchairs. I remember asking the doctor, so when am I going to be right to play again? That's how little I knew what had happened to me. I knew that my legs were tingly and I couldn't really use my hands that well at, at all. But I just thought it was one of those things that would pass. And I still remember him kind of, not laughing, but he said, well, I don't think you'll be playing rugby league for a while. And I still didn't kind of really grasp that. Everyone in the Wheel Blacks has a story about an accident. Not all of them happened playing sport. 1985, jumped into the back seat of a car, drinking at that hotel all day and I mean all day and most of the night, and 